making the new garage as useful as the old one. It's gonna make it easier for me to work in here. And it'll be a little bit more pleasing for you guys. Thought it'd be a good opportunity too to answer a few of your questions that you've asked on the channel. So let's get into it. You know, this channel was really built upon a few important things. I mean, one of the obvious is riding a Harley Iron 883. And one super common comment I got was, the Iron 883 just doesn't have any legs. Here's one from Dominique Coscarelli. He says, I've had the Iron 883 for two years. It's great, but it just doesn't have the legs. You know, Dominique, it really all just depends on what you're going for. I rode the Iron 883 4,500 miles across the country. I was able to pass trucks. I was able to ride off road. I was able to ride in areas you wouldn't expect. If you push that transmission into high RPMs, that bike will do what you want it to do. There's a lot of funny comments that made me laugh too. In my 25K mile review video of the Iron, Dreadful King 704 said, I love how there's more face than motorcycle. At the time of that comment, there was more than 800 likes on that video and 30,000 views. Somebody must love my ugly mug. I'm pretty sure that video has way more likes and views right now. Go check it out. I got it down below, up above. Dreadful King 704 wasn't the only one to make that comment about more face than motorcycle. <laughs> it's pretty hilarious, actually. Thank goodness many of you overlooked it to watch that video, because there's a lot of good information in it. More importantly, thank goodness my editing skills have improved so much that these videos are a lot more enjoyable for you guys to watch. At least, I, I hope they are. There'll be a lot more to come, so keep watching. One comment that really made me laugh was from Relentless. He simply said, Blockhead. <laughs> That's another channel, dude. I love his stuff, but I doubt you'd find long distance sporty riding on his channel. David Figge has a really good comment. As many of you know, I ride in and around the Driftless region here in Wisconsin. David Figge's near Milwaukee, and he suggested we have a group ride in the Driftless region. He'd love to ride some of those curvy and hilly roads. He left that comment before COVID hit. COVID kind of undid that plan. I guarantee you, 2021, we're gonna have a lot of rides. I set a website up over at greategrippmoto.com. I'm gonna to put together some events and on a schedule on that website, I'll have all those events. So check out gradygripmotor.com. I'll have more than just schedules. If you shared your bike with me, I've got a page dedicated to that. I also have some contests and I'll have some updates on there that I won't have on this channel. Stay tuned. some sports just stuff. I got a lot of comments about oil leaking after I talked about the oil coming out of the breathers, misting in the air filter, pulling up, and then you get blow by all over your pants and legs and bike and all that. This is a normal thing. And a lot of you guys said, no way am I gonna buy a bike that leaks. It's not leaking. It's very natural for the Evolution engine to do this. And I got every suggestion to solve this problem that I've had well before I talked about it in this video from keeping the oil level low to getting a larger air filter to letting it seep out out of the bottom of the bike with a tube. Honestly, the only thing that works 
is having a catch can. That's the best solution. I don't know, let me know what you think. In the first video of the Adventure Bike Championship, when I was talking about suspension, Chris Thompson was talking about it too. He says, dampening means to get wet. I think you mean damping. Great vid though. Yeah, <laughs> I definitely meant damping and not dampening. That's something very different while riding your bike by people. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. So before doing this video, I mentioned that I was gonna do a Q&A video on Instagram and also on the channel, on the community tab. And I got some pretty good questions. Bulldog Badger, who's been a friend of the channel for a long time, and I appreciate all his support. He asks a really good question. What are your top three bucket list locations that you wanna to travel to and why? This could be a video on itself, but I'll do it really quick. The first one, Pan America route. That would be an amazing journey. It'd be a long journey, it'd be a challenging journey. That's what this channel is about, those challenges and experiencing those challenges and sharing those challenges with you. It's something I've always wanted to do either by bicycle or by motorcycle, but it's something that's gonna happen at some point in my life. You told me about your adventure on a 50cc motorcycle from Land's End to John O'Groats. Just trying to live up to that. Another place I'd like to go, I've done a lot of long distance touring on a bicycle. From mountaintops to deserts to reaching the ocean. Amazing experience. One of those places that I traveled to was the Going to the Sun Road in Glacier National Park. Amazing ride on a bicycle. It'd be equally as amazing on a motorcycle. Look for that on this channel in the future. Now the last one, I'm gonna cheat a little bit because it's gonna be multiple locations. The United States is filled with some amazing places to ride. And the national parks here in the States allows for a lot of great riding. So at some point post COVID, when we're able to travel again, I'm gonna do a tour of a lot of national parks here in the States. And I'm gonna try and visit nearly everybody that I wanted to before COVID. A big trip is gonna happen in 2021. It may be that one, it may not be. I still gotta develop my plans figure out what's gonna work best for the bike that I'll have for those adventures. And hey, if you haven't followed Bulldog Badger, he's got his own YouTube channel. It's about travel, wild camping, and he's got a few motorbikes in there too. Check him out, I got him in the link in the description, and I think I got him above, probably at the end of this video too. Check him out. When I posted that I was gonna do a Q&A, I asked for some comments to possibly make me laugh. <laughs> and in it, I, I mentioned that I was putting my bike away for the winter. There's six inches of snow on the ground right now. But Pete Swisher says, time to go out in the garage, sit on the bike, and say, banana, 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 really loud for four months. <laughs> Pete. <laughs> I think you mean potato, potato, potato. <laughs> Pete, I don't know what sound your bike makes, but my hardly goes potato, potato, potato. <laughs> I wanted to go banana, banana, banana though. At any rate, sitting on the bike and doing that, as absurd as it is, that's what we gotta do here in Wisconsin. Sit on it and make motorcycle noises for four months. Thanks for the laugh, Pete. Really appreciate it. Riders asked a similar question. You could live anywhere, where would it be? He also asked, what's your dream motorcycle? And finally, would you roller skate in a buffalo herd? All very important questions. Anybody who's watched the Route 66 series knows that Flagstaff holds a special place in my heart. I love the mountains there. I love the San Francisco peaks there. I love the high desert. I love that it snows a ton during winter, but if I wanted to get away from winter, I could ride my motorcycle 30 miles south to Sedona or even anywhere else in Arizona so I can enjoy <laughs> some warmer riding weather. It doesn't have to be Flagstaff though. It could be someplace similar to that. High desert, mountains, being able to get away from the winter when I want to, being able to enjoy it when I want to. Any place like Flagstaff is where I'd want to live. Good life riders, dude, I can't answer my dream motorcycle question yet. I'm looking at it right now. It's in this garage and it's gonna be revealed at the end of the Adventure Bike Championship Series. So another four weeks or so. Yeah, it's, it's been really hard for me to not tell you guys what bike I have. 
eh, maybe you think it's kind of mean that I actually have the bike now and haven't told you, but this Adventure Bike Championship is way too much fun and I'm enjoying it. I'll let you know the answer to that question as soon as the championship is done. Finally, your most important question. Would I roller skate in a buffalo herd? Well, that depends. Are the buffaloes roller skating as well? If so, hell yeah. So this last one, I I'm really struggling with because I want to be able to answer it and I can't. And it comes from 63andy on Instagram. Reason why I want to be able to answer this is because Andy has been a really good friend of this channel for a long time. And he wants to know how to disable the immobilizer on his iron. A week with the bike outside makes it really struggle to turn over. And he's gone through three batteries in four years. That's just way too much. Thing is, Andy, I don't have an immobilizer on my bike. So if any of you guys out there have an answer for Andy, letting him know how to disable the immobilizer, leave some comments below. That's looking pretty good. I'm liking that quite a bit. Time to get some tools hung. Thanks for watching this one, everybody. I love doing these Q&A videos. They don't get a lot of views usually. This is basically for the subscribers. So thanks for watching, guys. Be kind, stay safe out there. Keep your wheels rolling in the right direction. I'll see you in the next video.